Have you ever wondered what it's like to try to conduct science experiments in outer space? We've got someone here in studio who actually knows. Joining us now is NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur, along with NASA's K-12 education advisor, Cindy Hasselbring. Thanks to you both. Thank you. Thanks. Megan, I want to get started with you. Now, in total, you have spent more than 200 hours in outer space. Can you talk a little bit about some of the various missions that you've been on? And then, of course, the question that I just have to ask, what's it like in outer space? <laughs> yes, yeah, so on my very first mission, I flew on the Space Shuttle Atlantis to fix the Hubble Space Telescope, and we spent about 13 days in space. And then my second mission was just in 2021, and we spent 200 days on the International Space Station living and working, conducting science experiments, technology demonstrations, and having a lot of fun. I mean, you're up there for almost a year, you know, creeping up on a year. Do you get <laughs> bored at all? What's it like looking down and seeing Earth? Well, Earth is so beautiful that whenever we did have free time, that is absolutely what we would do is look out, maybe take pictures of favorite places, you know, wave as you go over your friend's house kind of thing. <laughs> um, and, and you cannot ever get bored of that. Looking at our beautiful planet is just, it's remarkable. And I felt lucky to get the chance to do it. Talk a little bit about some of the science experiments that you conducted and did anything turn out differently than you expected maybe went awry? Certainly sometimes you have an experiment um, that's not working or you're not able to do the work exactly in the way you've been instructed to do it. We're fortunate that we have an expert sort of looking over our shoulder via camera, somebody on earth that's helping us you know work through an experiment um, and we can give them feedback as well like hey this task that you wanted me to do the way you wanted me to mix these liquids it's not working and as I'm the expert in the local environment, right? I need to give them feedback on how can we do this better? How can we still get um, the science that you want to get? So I love that collaborative nature of it. it was a lot of fun for me. Interesting. All right, Cindy, let's talk a little bit about your position and really, you know, for all those, the young boys and girls that say, I want to be an astronaut one day, you are very active in trying to make that a reality. Absolutely. And I was one of those kids that wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> yes. So it's amazing to sit here next to Megan, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we so when we talk about Artemis, which is the mission going to the moon and Mars, mm -hmm. we have a number of challenges to really get students hands dirty, so to speak, and get them involved in helping us solve the challenges that our, our professionals are currently facing. So we have an app development challenge where kids are designing an app that can be used uh, for the Artemis program. Uh, we have Lunabotics, we have human exploration rover challenges. So all those challenges that our professionals are experiencing, we try to get kids to actually be involved in, in how to solve them. And Cindy, I'm sure, you know, when you have real life events happening, you know, in the now, that it's much easier to get students engaged and interested in it. Yeah, I mean, this is a time to be involved in space, yeah. right? With all of the partners that we have that are helping us in these missions, uh, it's really the time. And, you know, kids, many want to be astronauts, and that's wonderful, but not all are going to be astronauts. But there's a variety of careers, and that's what really what our focus has been, is helping them understand, yes, you can become an astronaut, here are some things that maybe could help you, but what other places in space are there for students? So if they enjoy science, you know, they can be a researcher, or they can be an astronaut, of course, but th there's so many other careers that they can do and be involved in the space industry, which is really exciting. All right, final question for you. The most surprising thing about <laughs> outer space? Well, we spend a lot of time making sure that we don't surprise people when they get to space, right? We <laughs> I guess like, you don't want to be surprised. No, you don't want to be surprised. We <laughs> like everything to be nominal is a word you hear all the time at NASA. It's nominal. Um, I think for me, the, the thing that um, it wasn't unexpected, like you expect to be amazed by Earth, right? When you see Earth from space, you know it's going to amaze you, but you cannot prepare yourself for the impact that it really has on you, on your mind, on your soul, when you see our beautiful planet from space. And it's, it just never gets old. Any plans for another trip? Well, um, you know, my eight-year-old son says, you know, nobody's going to space anymore, mommy. We're all done. Um, but you know, you never know. Maybe we'll go on a family vacation sometime to the moon. There you go. Maybe so. One of these days. It has been such a pleasure speaking to both of you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.